everyone, and welcome to another virtual painting session. As the title entails, this painting is currently available for special sale at the moment, so if you check the comments section, uh, I have pinned the link. So the painting is available at first come, first serve. The colors that I'm using are all fast matte. So this fast matte, why did I say fast matte? They're all fast dryers. Uh, Griffin, Alkid, um, Winsor Newton, Griffin, Alkid, Titanium, White, Cadmium, Yellow, Deep Hue, Yellow, Ochre, Winsor, Red, Permanent, Alizarin, Crimson, Raw, Umber, Ivory, Black, Ultramarine, Blue, this is Venetian, Medium by Rublev. All of these colors are now listed in the description box of this video. And in fact, they were also listed in the description box of last week's video. So if you're interested in purchasing these exact same colors, definitely check out the link in the description box down below. And I uh, hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, we have our chat box there in the corner for everyone that is watching live. Again, uh, from time to time, I will show the, um, the information that you're about to see right now. This painting is available for Special sale, special sale purchased during tonight's live stream. The buyer will also receive a free painting study on a sheet of canvas. All right, so let's get to it. Um, with this painting, I don't have that much more that I want to do. Um, what I want to do, hey Phoenix Gaming, um, I've been good. Welcome back. Uh, I've just been doing some painting. Uh, I don't have that much more left with this painting except for. Uh, you know, putting in more subtlety. I don't want to add too much more. What I want to do is add subtlety. And with the Griffin Alkids, with the fast dryers, I've noticed that the colors don't sink in as much. So there's not as much of a need to oil out heavily as before. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just jump right into the, uh, the hair, areas in the hair that I can easily refine. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the darkest dark, and I'm going to be adding medium as I go. I'm going to be laying down a couch. Now, again, since these are fast dryers, this painting will be completely dry in much faster time than uh, you know, regular oil paint. So I'm going to be very cautious with where I paint to take this painting to a completion. Uh, hey Monique, uh, Blue Dragon, what's up? The eyeglasses, we had the eyeglasses in last time. Um, I guess I had them in too small and everyone said that the eyeglasses kind of took away from the painting. I could perhaps add the eyeglasses, uh, but it, it doesn't seem like everyone liked the eyeglasses last time. Hey S, uh, Colin, ooh, Cloud Harry, uh, hey probably reacted to your kitten painting. Um, Hope you check it out. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to be putting in the darkest darks, and this is kind of going to be a test to see if it um, has sunken in too much. Of course, it's going to sink in a little bit, but almost nothing. So it almost didn't sink in at all. And if you're wondering what sinking in means, it means that when the oil painting dries, the darks tend to appear kind of faded, and uh, that's normal. That that happens all the time. So fat over lean. Remember, we're going to talk about fat over lean. Uh, this is going to be the oiliest of the layers. Meaning, since this is going to be the finale of this painting, I'm going to use the most medium uh, out of all the layers. So see how it's starting to get a nice uh, darker tone. Um, so yeah, everyone said not to have the glasses. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, of course, there's. I have nothing against glasses. As as you can see here, I'm pretty blind. Um, of course, you can't see that, but I have glasses myself, so I don't have anything against glasses. I've had glasses since I think like the sixth grade or the fifth grade. I've had glasses for a long time. So shout out to everyone there watching that also wears glasses and uh, can't see anything at all without the glasses. Without the glasses, I mean, I see nothing. Um, I just see simple shapes, which is actually kind of useful when you're painting from life um, in particular. But when you're painting from photo reference, it, it's also helpful sometimes to take your glasses off and to just see colors, shapes of colors. 
this is Venetian medium. So now I'm going to be moving my way up from the darkest dark. And this is kind of a warm up really, uh, starting in this section here. I was tempted to just jump right into the, uh, the features and I thought maybe I should warm up a little bit here. So again, this painting at the moment is currently available as a, sp a special sale. <laughs> Julie, you were also wear glasses. Yeah, I would be lost. Like, lost without my glasses. I also have something else to announce uh, later today, and that includes uh, two new tiers in my Patreon, so I have now added um, benefits for online education and my online classes, but I'll talk a little more about that later. So I'm putting in a little more medium and see how I'm kind of building my way up from the darker darks all the way up to the light to get a kind of sense of contrast. Hey Monique, maybe a new portrait of a woman reading with glasses as an accent. Yeah, that, that could work. Um, I guess the glasses didn't really work in context with this, this image. So we'll add the glasses at another time. Yep, that's a great idea, Monique. So, as you're seeing, the colors didn't fade that much, which is such a such a nice thing to have with these um, Alkid oil paints. So everything I'm, I'm touching here is pretty much going to be uh, the last brush strokes in that section. Um, so for instance, I put my foot down there, that's going to definitely be the darkest of the darks. Hey Monique, have to leave early tonight. Yep, yeah, uh, hope you will enjoy uh, the new tiers. They, uh, since you have to leave early, I can talk about them a little bit sooner. Um, they involve um, one tier, which is now the new top tier, is one-on-one. -on -one. So if anyone out there wants to have a one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me, that is now available in my Patreon. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on, but yes, one-on-one -on -one tutoring is now available and group tutoring is now available. Two new tiers that have been introduced and I will be using the Zoom software. I've been testing it, I've connected my microphone and my cameras and everything, so everything should be running very, very smoothly as I have already done tests with it, so pretty much ready to go. And I'll talk more about that later again. I'm trying to add in these uh, darker accents to the hair. Uh, how to blend seamlessly. Any tips? Um, let's see. I would, I would suggest that um, it, it's more of a value thing in the beginning. Now, I'm not really blending much, but what I'm doing is I'm adding um, more of a glaze. So see, I'm going to swap brushes uh, to another brush. Actually, let's get a hmm, let's get a brand new brush. And again, these are just regular, cheap old brushes you can get at uh, your local Michaels or your local uh, uh, arts and crafts store. Not very expensive brushes. Um, I add medium to the section that I'm going to work on. So for instance, I'm going to paint in some of these um, darker accents. See, you can kind of see through the layers a little bit there. So I'm going to go ahead add some more of the darks. and. One of the biggest ways to get the effect of light to really, really shine is to make sure that the darks are um, painted in adequately. So now that I have a little bit of oil there, and again, like I said, the medium that I refer to as the oil um, is Venetian medium made by the brand Rublev. Hey Julie, yep, one-on-one -on -one lessons. We finally, we finally have them available. So I'm just trying to put in these darker accents. And I'm going to add more planes to the hair. And 
and I'm letting the transparency do a lot of the work here so I don't really have to work too hard to to get these um, transitions because I'm just using the glaze to do a lot of it for me uh, let's see hey hard job oh thank you uh, let's see, EX the artist, uh, he will be doing Zoom classes or something like that. Yep, I have added Zoom to my uh, repertoire of online teaching technology. Okay, so now that I have that dark established, now I've ex established the ground. Like, I've established the, the darkest dark here. And I'm working my way up towards the uh, the lighter lights. Now that I've kind of uh, quote unquote warmed up a little bit, now I can start to really put in more planes to get the kind of the the waviness of the hair. Not that I want to overemphasize it too much, um, but and again, I'll I'll uh, talk about the zoom in a little while um, when at least uh, half of everyone <laughs> signs in. At the moment, we have like 20 something of us watching the the video live, so I'll wait a little while. Hey, you party, Lopez. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add some more of the waves. For the hair. And again, this is the oiliest that the paint is going to be, meaning the, the fattest that the paint layer is going to be. Remember, you paint fat over lean. So, lean paint just means it doesn't have a lot of medium in it. Hey Steven, no worries. Alright, um, so as I mentioned, I'm gonna be putting in more of the waves for the hair. And before it was kind of a purplish layer, and now it's kind of like a pink layered onto the purple. Try to get more of the that kind of wavy glow, and let's use a little, little bit of the uh, cadmium yellow deep hue. Something like this. Pretty, pretty decent plane here for the wave of the hair. Hey, John Snyder, welcome to the stream. So again, the materials include Alkid oil paints, Winsor Newton Griffin Alkid oil paints. These are fast drying oil paints, and I'm using a fast drying medium for my medium, which is Venetian medium made by the brand called Rublev. And right now I'm just putting in more planes here for the waves. Not too much so. And remember this painting is currently available. I think we have now at least 10 more of us here. So again I will show the the uh, information for the special sale. So again, you uh, watching at the moment have the chance to own 
this painting. The, I was going to put it up as an auction at first, but then I kind of thought against it. And um, I have the painting available at the same price as all of the previous paintings have been. So again, there is the price for for this one. So again, as a special sale, uh, it's, if you purchase during the stream, you will also receive a free painting study, a signed painting study on a sheet of canvas. Okay, so that seems about good. Was adding a few more waves into the hair. Let's see. Uh, Yupari, who is your favorite painter on YouTube? That's a tough question. I'm going to say it's definitely not me. Um, because that would be kind of conceited for me to say. Um, but, huh, see, on YouTube, I typically watch... Um, I typically watch uh, pet YouTubers, like uh, Exotic Lair, The Dark Den. Notice they're mainly um, tarantula. Uh video creators, um, Camp Kennan is another one I like. Um, I really like watching uh, this YouTube channel called uh, Chris Chris Hardwick. He's a uh, ball python breeder. All of these waves now. Before it was kind of choppy, the hair was kind of choppy, the planes weren't really that descriptive. But now we're getting kind of a uniform flow with the hair. Oh, thanks, Steve. <laughs> oh, yep, hard job. I think I answered his question. Um, I mean, I, I honestly don't think I have a favorite painter on YouTube because I, I don't really watch it as much. I watch, I mean, I'm in full, um, you know, full disclosure. The YouTube channel that I like to watch the most is titled uh, Chris Hardwick Reptiles. Or actually, it's just titled Chris Hardwick, um, a uh, ball python breeder. Alright, now let's get into more of the rendering in the face. So, as I mentioned before, um, again, we have like probably the smallest number of people here in a long time but that's okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to introduce the, um, the the two new tiers that I've added to my patreon these are going to be additions to the online class now the online class will remain as is so first I will talk about the online class it, it will remain starting at ten dollars a month that's not going to change so in case anyone is wondering so let me start with that one first so here is the um, the little thingy here the information here for the online class yes it is still as you're reading it there it is still ten dollars a month where you can join the online class but now what I've done is I've added two new tiers so one-on-one -on -one zoom tutoring tier this is $80 a month, which adds up to be $20 a session. So $20 a session is really what you're paying for the one-on-one -on -one tutoring tier. And in this tier, you can schedule any time between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to paint with me. It will just be the two of us creating a painting together and I will be tutoring you through it and you get to choose the content meaning portrait or ala prima or ala prima portrait or classical portrait or anything like that the one tier that you're seeing down here the forty dollar group zoom tutoring tier is basically ten dollars a session so the one down here is basically ten dollars a session and it is also through zoom where the group gets to choose the subject matter of which they paint and then of course the live stream tier is the one right next to it so those are the additions and again it's it's only going to add up to twenty dollars a week twenty dollars a session that you get to paint with me um, 
So it would be one on one, like Zoom is, is one on one, so I'll be able to talk with you directly. So in case anyone has been wanting those one on one tutoring sessions, they are now available on Patreon. So please check out the link to my Patreon. Please check out the link to the online classes. It is in the description box of this video and it's also posted periodically in the comments. So hopefully someone will like to join. Alrighty, so now I'm going to start off with the darker darks in the skin tones. Now I'm going to start off somewhere down here. At this stage in the painting, it's purely refinement now. It's going to be um, starting off with the shadow tone underneath of the chin. Hey, Eshan Saxon, I am 29. I've been painting since I was 17. Also, the group Zoom uh, is at a fixed time, so it's a Tuesday, um, Tuesdays at a fixed time. Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But that can also be adjusted depending on uh, what the group decides. Yeah, my apologies, I mispronounced your name. Hey, Kathy, awesome, yeah. We'll definitely enjoy having you there in the one-on-one -on -one painting uh, Zoom tutoring sessions. <laughs> Thanks, Harjot. Now that I've layered, or I've added the medium here, I'm gonna go and add a little bit of a kind of transparent warm color. Let's see if this is, it's about good. I don't always get the right color immediately, but this time I think I did. Very subtle stuff this time. And um, again, this painting was started in the Alla Prima style, in the Alla Prima fashion. And um, online students, we are definitely going to, I'm going to break that down for you in the online classes. The uh, the methodologies and the techniques behind Alla Prima. And um, honestly, I think it's a, a, an excellent way to start a painting, Alla Prima. It's just that it, it, I, in my opinion, it requires a little bit more patience to, uh, <laughs> it requires a little bit more patience to, um, to roll with it, <laughs> so to speak. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little second here. Hey, Harjot, been painting since 19, awesome. Uh, hey, S. Calder, um when did you decide you wanted to have painting as a mainstream job? Ooh, ever since I was in high school. I've been wanting to do this forever. Um, I'm not, not living comfortably, um, certainly not at a stage where I can say um, everything is running perfectly, but uh, I get by. And every day I can paint, it's like a dream come true, really. But I have, I have uh, confidence that we will continue to grow in our YouTube community, our social media communities, the online classes, and this is only the beginning. Yeah, we'll get there. Hey, Art by Zuzu. Hello. Um, let's see. Hey, Monique. 
Did you suggest you might add something more to the background, like trees? <laughs> no pressure. Just curious. Um, I was thinking about it, if you think that that would work out in the background. Um, so if anyone thinks that I should add trees to the background, I can certainly do so. But I, I kind of like the, the fiery luminosity. In fact, I have already titled this painting uh, Luminous. Uh, so let's go back to the uh, Etsy ad. I kind of like the way the background looks, um, the way it is, but I can also add stuff if anyone's interested, especially if someone's interested in buying this painting that's available right now. Um, I can always add something to the background, but as you can see in the picture here, the I feel like the background kind of goes well with the composition of the painting in general, but I don't know, it's up to what everyone thinks. Hey Southern Comfort, um, how long do the one-on-one -on -one classes go for? So it's really just down to, um, it's down to us really, but I, I have it listed for an hour, but it can probably go over an hour. And um, the one-on-one, -on -one, again, is going to be like um, the student can pick their time, their time slot that they would like to have. Um, so between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So suppose you schedule for like, I don't know, like um, 2 p.m. or something like that. Then we could potentially just paint together from 2 p.m. to like 4 or something like that. It's, it's, it's up to us. And you get to pick the painting project that you want to work on. And um, I mean also nothing changes with the online classes. So uh, if you feel like that is too much at the moment, please check out the online classes that are only $10 a month. Hey Marshall, I prefer to start a painting with a very detailed underdrawing. This uh, solidifies the image I want to create. Yep, that is uh, one way to do it. That's Project 2's approach um, in the online classes. We had a, uh, a very detailed transfer drawing for Project 2. Um, let's see. Hey, hard job. Yeah, it's a quiet night. Let's see. Alright, so what I want out of this painting at this stage right now is to continue to push the refinement on the face. So I'm going to be selectively choosing between the darkest darks and build that way. So I'm actually going to, with the paintbrush that has this shadow color, I'm going to add a little bit more medium and I'm going to just paint it directly into the concavity of the eye socket. And it's a very, very slow and easy glaze. And I gotta say, I mean, I'm I'm really a fan of the Alkid oil paints now. At first I was like, yeah, I'll try them. I was like, you know, they're pretty good. And then I was like, yeah, I recommend them. And now I'm like, man, I really like the Alkid, <laughs> the Alkid oil paints. Now a little bit more opaque, that's a little more medium. Alkid itself is a fast dryer. Um, a very archival from my understanding. And the fact that this has been painted on a panel, I know I haven't been looking at the comments, so I'm about to look at the comments right now, but um, the fact that this is being painted on a panel is definitely, you know, one of the more archival surfaces to paint on. So again, working from those darks, and then adding the um, the values little by little. So I'm going to look at the comments, see what I've missed. Um, hey, Harjot Ingrid, uh, he was asking for a commission, I think. Okay, 
um, from hard shot. Let's see. Uh, Marshall, how is Venetian medium different from others? Well, uh, for starters, Venetian medium is, um, let me read it out to you. It, uh, Venetian medium is based on research that 16th century Venetian painters added powdered glass to their paint. Contains leaded crystal glass powder, bodied linseed oil with small amounts of wax, turpentine, and lead. So it's a very complex mixture of stuff that goes into it. Um, and uh, it thins out the paint nicely, as you're seeing there. It's, it uh, thins out the paint nicely, but it doesn't... It, it still has kind of like that heavy feeling to it, and it doesn't thin out the paint in such a way that it feels like kind of weak and, and feeble. But you can also get the same type of effect if you use um, uh, Gamblin's uh, Neo McGilp. In fact, I have it right here. This is the one I recommend everyone to get because it's so much easier to find than Venetian Medium. But if you can find Venetian Medium, if you, um, sometimes you have to order it directly from the website, then it's still my preferred medium. Um, let's see, what have I missed? I've missed, uh, let's see, oh, okay, the art page, you're back, and you want a shout out again, and I can give you another shout out, um, at your request, the art page, shout out to you, thank you for tuning in to the virtual painting sessions, um, I'm very thankful that you are returning to the, uh, virtual painting sessions. And everyone that's here, again, I'm very thankful to all of our community that we are continuing. Everyone in the community um, that's here and, um, you know, the the following that we are starting to grow with the virtual painting sessions. So, again, thank you for tuning in the art page. Uh, hey, S. Colander, you should do a Q&A live about your journey and life. Would love to join in. My life is a little boring, but... Um, I can talk somewhat about it. Um, at the end of each virtual painting session, we usually kind of have a, a dedicated Q&A time. So uh, near, nearing the end of a painting session, I usually leave the cameras on while I'm cleaning the brushes and I answer uh, as many questions as I can. Now again, if you know any art collectors that are interested in this painting, it is still available for sale. If the painting does sell, so if we do manage to sell a painting during a stream, um, not only does the buyer get a free painting study in the box uh, on a sheet of canvas, but I also do a uh, celebration happy dance each time we sell a painting. So if anyone wants to see a very cringy, um, cringy yet hilarious happy dance when an artist sells a painting live during a virtual painting session, please reach out to your art collector buddies. Uh, let's see. What have I missed? Let me look at the comments. Okay, so it seems like everyone is talking amongst themselves, which is good. Um, I don't think I see any questions directed towards me that I missed. Hey Marshall, I have Neo McGill. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely a good medium to use. Hey Monique, maybe talk about the awkward stage. Don't give up. The awkward stage. Oh yeah. Um, the awkward stage in a painting, especially in a portrait painting, I think is that's the one thing among many, uh, but that's one of the biggest things that makes portraiture so difficult is the awkward stage. And the awkward stage is when the painting is kind of in the early stages to the early middle stages. And it's just, uh, it's because we're not used to seeing a an unfinished face. You know, um, I'm going to switch camera angles to talk to you directly. So when we see an unfinished face, I conjecture that it gives us a sense of uneasiness if we're not used to portrait painting. And that's something that's completely normal. 
especially um, in media today. I mean, I was just watching um, uh, one of the TV shows I'm watching on Netflix is titled The Haunting of uh, Blinn something. It's The Haunting of, uh, I think, like Blinn Mansion or something I'm watching. And one of the ghosts in the in the TV show has an unfinished face. And I saw the ghost, and rather than getting scared, I was like, man, look at the planes of the face on that mask. Uh, those artists really knew what they were doing when they created the mask. And that's just because I'm used to it. I mean, I'm used to seeing faces that are unfinished as paintings, where someone else watching The Haunting of uh, Blinn uh, Manor would see an unfinished face in the distance and get spooked, like freaked out. But I'm just used to seeing it because I, I paint portraits all the time. And the more that you paint portraits, um, the more used to the awkward stage you get and uh, the less painful <laughs> the awkward stage is um, in general. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I haven't finished it. Blee Manor, there it is. Um, Haunting of Blee Manor. I, I like the cinematography in it, but I mean, I don't know. I, I like it. <laughs> so again, I'm going to add the, the uh, medium with a different brush to the bottom. Now I'm going to use it, the glaze, and really, um, since I haven't oiled out in a while, in theory, the paintings that I've been creating more recently um, will have a tendency to yellow less over time. The more you oil out the painting, the more you increase the chances of the, the layer of paint um, yellowing. So in theory, if you can get by working this way, adding the medium to your paints as you go, uh, in theory it should minimize the amount of yellowing. So one way that you can minimize the potential of yellowing is by not going too heavy uh, with the medium and with uh, not oiling out too much. One way to avoid cracking of the painting is to uh, follow Vatabaline. So just make sure that you don't oil out too much and make sure that you use less medium in the beginning and more medium or oil in the final layer. Like I said, this will be the oiliest of the layers. Bly like fly. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't mind it. I mean, I'm not finished with it, but I don't mind it. Uh, how do you, so Matt K, how do you leave your brushes without washing them. I usually clean them with uh, my Gamsol, my Odorless Mineral Spirits. Hey, it's Colin Dury. Do you varnish your paintings? Um, uh, question mark. Why do you use, what do you use for this? What? Oh, um, I do varnish them, especially the more recent ones. I use um, Gamvar Picture Varnish. It's a uh, varnish that you can use while the painting is touch dry. So you do not have to wait the six months uh, to varnish if you're using Gamvar picture varnish. And I make sure that my paintings are varnished before they uh, are sent to their new owners. Marshall, I noticed with refined linseed oil uh, will yellow when drying. This could be. Um, hey, you Pari Lopez. Uh, let's see. At the at the time, I think we're good um, with uh, Ingrid, Julie, um, Harja, Sunger, and I think uh, we still have Dondo. Um, so I think we're good with that, but I will definitely keep your question in mind.
So I'm trying to kind of blend this into the half tone that I put in there. And uh, it's, it's really a matter of value per value trying to get that transition to be super clean. Wall page, welcome back. Let's see, Ingrid, what color for the white of the eyes? So the white of the eyes, um, I usually use uh, black and white and a little bit of skin tone. Uh, the what I try to watch out for is to make it. I, I try not to make it too too pink or too yellow. If you catch my drift. As, as Colin Dury, um, the paints on the palette looks too much at the moment. What do you do if you are done with the painting and lots of paint still on the palette? Uh, what I actually do, I'll show you. Um, when I'm done with the painting session, I just take the paint off and put it on my uh, handheld palette. This is my handheld palette that I use when I'm painting off camera. Uh, I just take the same paints, put them on here, and just keep painting. If not, I just leave them there, um, and they're, they're perfectly fine. They will dry on the palette, um, on the outer layer, and if I want, I can take a palette knife and dig into them and get back some of the old paint. Hey, Noel. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Noel Page. What was I getting at? So I'm trying to get this transition to be very subtle. Um, it's Remember, subtlety is this game of how close can you get the values to one another and uh, maintain their subtle variation from each other. In fact, everything that I'm going to do from this point on here is all a game of subtlety. It's all a game of subtlety. Um, the, the secret to this, if there is a secret, which there shouldn't be because I don't think there should be any secrets to this, is that you have to make the decision from, uh, from far back. So for instance, um, it's actually a good thing that I have this microphone blocking me, <laughs> so to speak, from my painting. So I, I can't be painting like this because I have a microphone blocking me, plus my hat will block the footage of the camera that's above my head. And remember that the um, painting is at a 45 degree angle. The camera up there that you can't see is at a 45 degree angle, five feet above and zoomed in. So with subtlety, you want to be pretty far away um, when you make comparisons, especially this far in the paintings that you're working on, you don't want to be like five inches away from the painting. So you want to be really far away from the painting when you make these decisions. Oh, thanks Monique <laughs> about the luminous uh, comment. Uh, hey Marshall, when varnishing a painting, which is better, spray on or spray on or brush on varnish? I like the brush. Um, I'll take care of Glenn. I like the brushed on varnish. In a while, I've been painting since I was uh, 17, 18. Um, I'm now 29. So if we're going off of 18. Again, I started like when I was about to turn 18. I remember because I had to have a waiver signed so I could take figure drawing courses. Um, so, uh, what does that add up to? Like about 11, going on 12 years. 
Oh, well, thanks, RFX. Uh, I've been fortunate to have really good teachers in my, um, you know, coming up. I had really, really good teachers in the past, so I feel very fortunate about that. And my goal is to make this accessible, um, affordable to everyone in the world. It's my goal. And of course to make a living doing that. It's a huge endeavor. Uh, so yes, yes, I've had, uh, I'm not entirely self-taught, no. And um, I usually make this, this uh, I don't know if it's a comparison or, or whatever it is. It's, um, you know, I believe that you can learn all of this yourself. Um, but in general, I feel like we can self-teach ourselves almost anything. But the problem, not that it's a problem, but um, I'll just say the problem is that it may take us say three years to learn a concept that it would have taken us three weeks if we had um, the right kind of teaching. So I know there's a lot of hype towards the self-taught um, self-taughtness about art but I mean to be honest I mean if if you can teach yourself everything that I mean obviously the teacher's not the one learning you're the one learning but um, you know if you have the right guidance and you already are capable of teaching yourself on your own, it, there's really no reason to not seek out the, uh, the teachers that can help you get there faster. Because you can get there. Everything that I show you here, everything that I show everyone is something that I believe they can do. Especially in the, um, the online classes, because with the online classes, everything is um, very, very uh, detailed and explained. This is a virtual painting session, so I'm showing you, um, so the education is through the demonstration. I'm explaining some of it, but, um, you know, given time constraints, I can't explain as much as I can in the um, online classes. And now with the Zoom, the one-on-one, -on -one, it would just be you and me painting, and I would be able to see your painting as you're creating it, and give you advice on your painting as you're creating it. Ingrid, yeah, it's hard to find. Um, yep, as uh, Harjot mentioned, my teacher, one of my teachers is an artist named Paulden Hamilton. Yep, and he is a cool guy. He's a cool cat. So again, this is all a game of subtlety. Hey Monique, I could not paint well without instruction, pre uh, preferably live. Well, this is true. Hey Nawal, uh, Yupari is my last name. It's, it's my last name. So, um, my first name is, uh, I don't like my first name, so I usually don't mention my first name. Um, but Yupari is my last name. And yes, you have learned so much with us, Kathy. And everyone in the online classes, again, I'm so proud of my students. And the community that we're building there is so wonderful. All right, so now I'm gonna take another step back and um, mm, mm, mm. I want to say that the nose is a little gray here so there's still a little bit too much of the under layers there so I'm gonna get the uh, brush that I was using to add on the medium
and I'm adding the Venetian medium and then I'm going to paint right into this oh yeah everyone is doing wonderfully in the online classes and again um, with the online classes you can join in with any at any skill level whether you have no experience or you have a ton of experience we have a pretty good uh, range of diversity in the online classes with the common denominator that everyone is really serious about learning hey ask Colin Derry uh, you're one of the best teachers you explained very nicely oh thank you hey Mervat hey Pari wonderful hair color it's my hair color I love it. Oh, awesome. You painted perfectly and more beautiful than the original picture. Well, thank you. Um, I, hey, Nawal. Uh, you didn't have to... Hmm. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, as Harjot mentioned, um, Please, if you haven't uh, pressed on the like button, please press the like button. Uh, I hear it helps others find the channel. It helps the, the YouTube channel become, um, I guess, e easily found on Google. I'm putting in a little more softness to the ball above the nose and then I'm going to put in those more uh, top lit planes top lip planes. The lighter planes are usually um, a little bit, uh, let's see, how long is the online classes? So in the, in the wall, um, the online classes today actually we're going to be, um, we, we've done lesson number 45 I think it was, 45. Uh, it's hard for me to keep track now. I do keep track of the lesson numbers but uh, suppose it's 45, which I think today was 45, less than 45. That means over 45 hours of instruction for only $10 a month. And um, the classes are set so you can do them, uh, take the classes at your own pace. Let's see. Hey, Matt K, the paint seems to give you, seems to get very dry and sticky on the palette after a couple hours. Any tips? Or is it just a consequence of fast drying uh, I have to live with? Um, Matt, I'd say it, it is kind of a consequence of the fast drying nature. Um, I get where you're coming from. Um, I usually don't work more than three and a half hours on a painting. And after that, the painting is like, the, it's almost, it'll almost feel like it's completely dry. So let's hope that I do well um, finishing this painting. If I do well finishing this painting, there is a good chance that it will sell. And if it sells, then we'll of course do the uh, the celebration happy dance. So no pressure. Everything's on the line here. Every brushstroke.
All or nothing. Paint or die, right? <laughs> Ride or die, paint or die. <laughs> I really enjoy these owl kits, I must say. <laughs> you guys memorized the trolls. Uh oh. If there's a war in the in the comments that might make it harder for me to sell the painting so let's not fight let's all be kind to one another question the jacket looks like one big color uh yeah i, I wanted to leave it kind of like that like vignette like that i was going to add the um the detail on it but i think that i'm going to have it like that hey Mar uh maria joe pink uh oh, thanks for the good night from spain hey marshall do you have room in your studio to dance uh certainly for the happy dance certainly Am I going to add some more light on the neck, uh, S. Colander? Um, I don't know. Um, let's see. I, I don't think I w the neck is in shadow. When I squint at the image, I barely see anything in the neck. And I've already glazed it kind of warm. Um, I don't know if you can see it when I turn the... Well, I guess you can't really see it, but... See that? There's still light there on the neck. Yeah, I don't know about the backpack. Hey Marshall, do you have ghosts? I hear footsteps. Oh, there are plenty of ghosts here. <laughs> no, just kidding. There's people in the background that make quite a lot of noise. I'm uh, sorry that you can hear the noise. Um, this is not my... I, I don't own this space, so... Um, yeah, there's going to be noise around, so I apologize for that. Uh, Maria Jo. No, don't worry. The ghosts aren't going to come after you. It's the people in the house that are putting on the TV and stomping their feet and stuff that they like to do while I'm streaming. That's all it is. Hey Mary Jo Pink, uh, do you have any any pet? Um, yeah, no, no worries for the question. Of course, um, I do. I have uh, pets. I have um, ball pythons, which whom I love very much. Um, I have pet tarantulas and bearded dragons. Basically, the most low low maintenance pets you can have. Um, Bearded dragons do take a lot of work, however, uh, but nowhere near as much work as, say, um, 
say a, a cat or a dog. We have Mr. Taco, the family Chihuahua. Um, let's see. <laughs> hey, party, Lopez. I would, uh, I would relax. It. I don't know what's going on between everyone in the comments there, but I think we should all just. Calmadito, nada pasa aquí. Todo está bien. Todo está bien. No se preocupe. <laughs> Let's all be calm. Hey, Define Arts. Hey, you party. Uh, thanks for this. You have helped me more than you know. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that this has been been helping. Hey, Matt. K cats? Yeah, I mean, litter boxes. Uh, I know because the, um, the um, owners of the house here have two cats. And that litter box needs to be changed, like, a lot. And um, their food's expensive. They break things. I mean, it's all relative. Hey, Dajit uh, Channel, thank you. Hey, Blue Dragon, yep. Todo está chévere. I think that's a Peruvian word, right? Peruvian lingo. Finally. I think I finally have that plane where I want it to be. Hey Mary Jo, pink, um, I don't understand it because my English is no good enough. Which animals did he say? Um, I understood dragons. Yep, I have bearded dragons. Bearded dragons. Um, friendliest lizards ever. Not always, but for the most part. Uh, bearded dragons are very friendly. And my uh, my ball pythons are like the the friendliest pets I've ever had, really. But in any case, um, I think I have the wing of the nose finished. I think now I'm gonna really try to put in that light on the bulb of the nose. Hey, uh, Rachel Pratt. Oh, thank you. Hey, Blue Dragon. Yeah, I, I knew it was... Uh, I've heard that word before. Uh, and my family's from Peru. Awesome. Hey, S. Culinary. I am from Beltsville, Maryland. Born and raised in Maryland. I've been here all my life. Um, so, yep, I'm from Maryland. But you, uh, you will frequently find me at the Plaza Art Store in Vienna, Northern Virginia. That's where I usually go to buy all my paints and stuff when I'm shopping in person. Of course, that may change again if they shut everything down again. But for the most part, I'm. You, you'll usually find me at the Plaza Art Store in Vienna, Virginia. Northern Virginia. I mean, in all seriousness, I hope everyone here is doing well. Because I know times are getting tough. Even tougher. Hey, Riley. Welcome back, Riley. We were actually just talking about bearded dragons. <laughs> hey, Mary Jo Pink. Oh, thank you. 
Hey Mary Jo Pink, I understand Spanish better than I can speak it, and I can barely speak Spanish. In the wall, uh, going on lockdown on Monday. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, just stay safe, everyone. I mean, I know you hear that all the time, but definitely stay safe. Uh, I want everyone here to be perfectly safe. Now this plane is too sharp, too sharp of a plane change from the glabella to the um, the root of the nose, which is up here. So let's add a little bit of medium, and now adjust it. Hey Artsy. Let's see if I missed anything here. Yep, and um, as Julie mentioned, remember those of you watching, this painting is available as a special sale right now. Yep, you could own this painting. And not just this painting, but if you do purchase a painting tonight, you will also have a free painting study in the box. Painting study on sheet of canvas. So any one of these paintings, um, I have plenty of these, any one of these paintings will be in the box. Uh, and I choose which one it is. Actually, this is the oldest one. This one here I think is from, ooh, this one's like from 2000. 11 I think this somebody asked me about my paintings from when I was younger this painting here is like 2011 almost 10 years ago and um, so yeah uh, there's some dust on this one but <laughs> they'll all be cleaned up for you um, again if you do decide to purchase this painting today and again the link is in the comment section it is pinned in the comment section the price is the same price that it's been for all of the paintings in the um, of the virtual painting session uh, sales. So that's the price there. First come, first serve, as you know. Hey Riley, when is the next stream starting? Monday. Yep, Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Saturday. Usually around 5.30 or 5, but I guess we've, we've been consistently sticking with 5.30, so I think we can safely say 5.30. But since these are live, there are certain things that I have to deal with in my life, so sometimes it has to be 5, other times it has to be 5.30. Usually 5.30. Around this time on Monday, we'll be back starting another one. Hopefully not in another war in the comments. Remember everyone, calmadito, calm down. Everything is good. Life is great. We're able to paint. That's all we need. And of course I'm adding a glaze there for subtle transitions. Um, hey Ingrid, what size brush are you using? Um, pretty, pretty inexpensive, pretty cheap brush. This is a, it says 8 on it there, but this is no way a size 8 brush. Um, the closest I can compare it to um, is this one right here. This is a size 2 uh, Princeton brush. So they're pretty much the same, except this one is really old. So um, this is pretty much nothing more than like a blending brush at this point. Uh, but you can see they're kind of the same. So size 2, size 3 brush. Uh, hey, no, no, it's not at 7 um, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's 5.30 uh, usually.
Hey Matt K, what was the war about? I have no clue. Hey Riley, what? Uh, let's see. When the stream is going to end, can you show us your bearded dragon? I usually don't bring the bearded dragon, um, bring the bearded dragons here because of the fumes. Um, this studio is closed away from the pets, so I'd act I'd have to get up and go to a different room, Riley. Um, but I did have a picture I think on my iPad of Pepper and Saltino, the bearded dragons. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Maybe during a drawing video, Riley, but um, again, it, the uh, solvents and everything is just not good for their, their lungs. Not that they're going to be here for a long time, but maybe. Hey Nawal, the painting, the price for the painting is the same price as the other ones have been. Um, so if if uh, this painting does sell, here is the, whoops, what did I do? There it is. So if the painting does sell, um, hopefully we manage to sell it during the stream. There is the price. Um, 255 for this painting, um, US dollars. It also gets you the free bonus painting in the box. So two paintings for the price of one. Yep, two bearded dragons. All right, so let me go ahead and add a little more of a dark kind of warmish glaze underneath of the nose. So please reach out to your art collector friends Tell them there's a special sale going on. And again, I'm sorry if you can if you hear all those footsteps in the background. That's beyond my control. You know, maybe if I manage to sell enough paintings, uh, I'll have my own place and I won't have to worry about those footsteps. Maybe one day. <laughs> hey, Sally's Art Studio. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Hey, Pari, uh, Lopez. Yep. Yeah. Let's let's all be chill. Like I said, calmadito. Everything's okay. <laughs> Life is good. Life is great. We get to paint. We might even sell a painting if I'm lucky. So a little bit of a kind of reddish glaze underneath of the nose. Hey Mary Jo Pink, uh, you part is my last name. Yes, my last name. But I've never really gone by my first name. I've always gone by my last name. My first name is a joke. Um, I usually don't go by my first name. Not that there's anything wrong with that name if somebody else has that name here, but uh, I usually don't go by my first name. I think we've almost just about completed the nose. Now I'm going to push some of the accents on the eyes and in the mouth, and then we're actually going to be very close to what I would consider the completion of this painting. Uh, most of the work was done in the in the previous stream, 
And as I said, this was started in the Alla Prima style. I'm not sure if I'll start the next one in that style, um, but it does help to get more of a kind of a refined finish in the end. And this painting, I mean, it really glows when you look at it in the in the light. It really glows, uh, and I think it has to do a lot with the palette knife um, texture and color in the background. Hey Riley, uh, when you are making your paintings, what do you start with the torso? I usually start with the general uh, big shape for the uh, outside perimeter of the of the figure. So I usually start with the outside shape of the figure. Hey Mary Jo Pink, uh, it happened the same with me. I prefer to be called just Maria, but on uh, Instagram I use uh, Maria Jo, but the real name is Maria. Uh, Jos Josie? Josie? Oh, cool. I oh, thank you, Merva. Oh, yes, uh, Nawal, this painting is available for sale. Special sale during the stream only. Um, let's see. Uh, Maria Jo. Uh, and the red hair is amazing. I also have that color with uh, henna, uh, awesome. Uh, let's see what happened here. I uh, wouldn't write that, you Pari Lopez, that's not friendly. Hmm, let's see, Sarley's Art Studio, I'm learning portrait painting, this is helpful on the color palette. Oh, I'm glad this is helpful. Hey Ronald Miller, uh, hey bros, looking fantastic, love how it pops, oh thank you. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, thanks hard job, yeah that, that comment was not, not appreciated. But, as always, Everything is peaceful, tranquil, relaxing. There's birds singing. There's flowers blooming. Everything's all good. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep the mood relaxing here. flame feather hello hey Julie um, I'm thinking I will um, I've been sticking with the portraits for a while and um, you know I've been lucky enough to sell a few of them so I don't know if I'll have the same luck tonight but I think for the most part um, everyone really likes the portraits so if that's what everyone wants to see we'll stick with the, the portraits as usual, um, I tend to experiment with the painting subject matter, so once in a while. Just like that rooster we painted that's still available on Etsy. Um, we can experiment. Okay, looks like we have an order. Let me double check here with my iPad. Hold on a second, everyone. Alrighty, looks like this painting has been sold according to Etsy. Um, so I won't release the name of the buyer unless the buyer um, would allow me to uh, mention their name. 
So, yep, this painting has been sold. So as we usually do when a painting is sold. Um, let's see, has is anyone has the buyer is the buyer in the chat because um, I couldn't read out the the name. So yep, yep. Time for the celebration happy dance. And of course, as required, it's mandatory. Are you ready for the cringe? I guarantee you this is the cringiest thing you will see on all of YouTube. Yeah, it's the cringiest thing ever. <laughs> Get ready. I sold a painting. I sold a painting. Hey. I sold a painting. I sold a painting. I sold a painting. So that is the happy dance. That's the celebration happy dance that you must do. So you, everyone watching, if you sell a painting, you must do a celebration happy dance. Because if you don't do a celebration happy dance, it's not as fun. It's fun to do a celebration happy dance. So uh, congratulations to the buyer. And of course, congratulations to all of us here because I do consider this a group effort between all of us to make these virtual painting sessions uh, fun and exciting for everyone. Fun, exciting, memorable, educational, everything positive that we can possibly do in a virtual painting session. So awesome. We sold a painting. <laughs> hey Kathy. Um, Hey Matt K, will you add a happy dance classes to Patreon? Could be, could be. Again, I'm trying to figure out. Um, so I see that the username is in like symbols. I'm trying to figure out. I'm on Etsy here. Oh, I read the order number. Well, I was. I was lost there. So again, thank you so much for your purchase, and um, I know your name now. I'm sorry that I read the thing wrong on my Etsy. I was too excited when I heard that sound. Um, I hope that you all heard the sound as well. Um, that sound is like my favorite sound of all time. The uh, the Etsy the uh, Etsy sound. So thank you so much to the person that has purchased the painting. Hey Uncle Sixteen, no liquid PayPal, tip jar, button. Um, I, uh, to be honest, I didn't didn't do it yet. I need to. I've been doing a lot of things um, with the online classes, Uncle Sixty, but uh, definitely I'm going to look into that, Uncle Sixty. So thank you for mentioning it, and you're keeping it in my mind as something that I can I can do on YouTube. And um, I didn't know that I could do that on YouTube before, so. I definitely have to check that out. And again, I'm going to smooth in a bunch of things. Uh, let's see. Let's see what have I, what have I missed. Uh, Emmer Vat, uh, you probably missed my question. Is the beauty of the background um, is because the brightness of the yellow ochre or because the complementary in the purplish of the hair and the dress? You got me. Um, so I did put, uh, does anyone remember? I did sneak in some violet here. Um, you are very observant, Mervat. So, yes, notice I snuck in some violet purple, and there's orange. So it's not just color, but it's color and value contrasted together. So the light here, uh, the titanium white, and the cadmium yellow deep, and the yellow ochre, gives me this really bright light, mostly cadmium yellow, but there's also the contrast with the purple and the orange, so yes, that is uh, a little bit of, um, I guess, color theory um, magic going into play here. But yeah, that's definitely part of the uh, the look. So again, I, I won't mention the buyer's name unless you would like me to mention your name. Also, if you are listening in the chat, please let me know if um, there, there's anything you want me to adjust in the painting before calling it complete and um, signing it. This is exciting. It's actually going to be um, my first, actually, it's going to be, I think my, yeah, it's my first virtual painting to sell that's actually going to go to a different continent. So I'm so excited about that one. Super excited. Yep, 
No problem, Mervot. Hey, Kathy, wood panel is better than canvas if you just sew and sand it uh, five times. Linen is so much better than uh, canvas. Um, I would say that it depends on how the surface is varnished. Um, so I, I'd say that a wooden panel is probably one of the most cost of cost effective and archival uh, materials to paint on. Artists such as uh, Peter Paul Rubens uh, was known to paint on panel a lot. You of course have the Mona Lisa, and so many different examples. Hey, Hydra, which continent? Yeah, let's figure out where is this painting going? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let's see. This painting is going to the UK. What's up, UK? Shout out to everyone here watching in the UK. And it must be really late in the UK, actually, right now. So, yay, this painting is going to be off to the UK. Awesome. And yes, I, it, I can ship international. That is a feature in the post office. So now we have a little more, more light there for the bottom of the upper lip there. Hey Uncle Sixty, how long do you wait before shipping the painting while it dries? Since this is Alkit, it's touch dry like tomorrow. So um, I'd give it a day extra, just to be extra sure that it's dry. I varnish it, then I give it a couple more days, uh, because Gamvar does dry pretty quickly. Um, and that usually will ultimately ship within uh, one to two weeks. So someone is going to have this painting and a um, painting on a, uh, a sheet of canvas, signed, of course, arrived to them in about two weeks. No more than that. It Well, it will ship in that time, that's what I should say, because I have no control over the post office, but it ships within one to two weeks, to answer your question. And I make sure that the paintings are completely ready and the boxes are as safe as possible to transport the painting. And I had a question actually on Instagram to to show how to uh, create those painting boxes. They're a little complex, but I can definitely talk about them at some point. Hey Julie, yeah, it's midnight in the UK. I'm so excited that this will this painting will be in the UK. I have one painting that's in London, I think. Um, someone, I think it's in London. I can't remember where. Um, uh, but it was a commission that I did a long time ago. That's the only painting of mine that's outside of the U.S., that exists outside of the U.S. So now this will be the first of the virtual painting session painting series that will be international. So I'm raising the light on the on the lips a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is start to key the lights. I've put in a lot of the refinement on the face. I don't want to over render the face either. So I will be now looking at the lights and adding any more uh, any extra bit of light that I possibly can is going to be added now. So what I'm going to do is get pure palette knife mixtures uh, and put them where I feel like it will really help the light to continue to to uh, to glow. Hey Danielle. Oh, thank you for your comment. I'm glad you are saying it looks beautiful. Hey Marshall, my Mona Lisa painting is on archival linen, 30 inch by 24. Awesome. Let's see. Hey, Riley. Uh, okay, when you send me uh, the Insta, show me all of the 
all of his paintings. How do I see the the beardies? I don't know if I have a picture of my bearded dragons on Instagram. Um, but maybe as like a special or something. I have like special animal edition, and then I'll use like the water mixable oil paints. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Um, I'll do a a special some some of these one of these days where we'll have it uh, like that. I'll, I'll look into it. So with palette knife, I'm mixing up a kind of pinkish color, but the trick is you don't want to have too much of the light. So I'll show you. I'm gonna test one section here at a time, and the background is pretty thick. Um, this is the painting with the most texture out of all of them in the virtual painting series there. Just slight, slight adjustment. And it'll add kind of a coolish color, and yes I'm using my finger, um, so this also comes with a fingerprint. Um, and I just want it to be very cool to contrast all of those colors there. And now what I'll get is a scrubby scrub brush and continue to blend it. Hey Helen, um, beautiful, I've watched from your first brush mark on this painting all the way through and I had to buy it. I'm so excited, thank you. Alrighty Helen, thank you so much. Helen. Uh, this is my super super happy shout out to you Helen. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you've enjoyed the development of this painting and I'm very very honored that you have purchased this painting and we're actually pretty much close to the finish of this painting so I'm just adding a few more areas of light around the um, the light most uh, not light, light most facing, but I'm adding a little stronger effective light is what I'm trying to do. Taking this painting to a finish, Helen, so if you see anything in the painting that you want me to adjust, again, I think that I like the way the painting looks like this, um, the vignette aspect of it, but if you see anything you would like me to adjust, Helen, please let me know. You definitely have the final say. So a little bit of a cooler tone there, and actually I'm just going to get the alizarin, straight alizarin. With of course the medium because we want it to, uh, to follow the proper layering techniques. Ooh, and look at that. But to be honest, I think that's the brightest light I've ever been able to achieve in, in any of my paintings really. Uh, portrait paintings, that is. This brings me back to the days where my, my first painting teacher was an impressionist, and he would have us do outdoor still life with palette knife in the morning hours. So um, this kind of brings me back to that, that kind of time where you're really trying to get the effect of light, but I'm really trying to get the glow. Um, I'm trying to get the glow of the light and also the form, the subtlety of the form. So well, thank you so much, Helen. Hey, Blue Dragon, um, you probably think it could be also possible to make the live streams and sell bigger paintings, like 32 or 38, whoops, 38 inches certainly possible. Um, so everyone say congratulations to Helen, the uh, new owner of this painting. Um, it, it's possible, but the boxes would be so much more complex to build. Angrid, yep, I can certainly talk more about uh, Zoom. Well, let's see. Hey Riley, yep, the bearded dragons are always pretty lazy. <laughs> They're pretty chill. Uh, so yeah, Ingrid, um, I can talk more about Zoom. So I have added two new tiers to the online classes. So I've um, added 
Now, this won't change anything in the online classes, but this, what this does is it gives you the ability to have one-on-one -on -one painting sessions with me. So we're both going to be painting the same painting at the same time, uh, and that is going to be the, uh, the top tier, the one-on-one -on -one mentoring tier. Uh, the other tier that we've added is the group mentoring tier, where we'll all be painting the same painting, but it will be a group choice as to the subject matter of the painting. Uh, of course, given that we can paint that subject matter, of course, on Zoom. And the same thing has to apply with the one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one, you get to pick which paint. So imagine imagine you want to paint uh, John Singer Sargent or something with me. Just let me know. Now, sign up for the one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, and we can do a Sargent Master Study together on Fridays. And you can pick whichever hour on Friday that is available any time between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday. And uh, the group tutoring sessions on Zoom will be on Tuesdays around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But that's also flexible depending on uh, what the group decides with that. So, that being said, again, if you're wondering about the pricing, here are the... Um, first of all, I want to say that the the um, online class is still there for ten dollars a month. It will stay the way it's been, so that's not gonna, that's not going to change. So what we have is the addition of this tier here, one-on-one -on -one Zoom tutoring tier, and the group tutoring tier. So again, please check out this right here. Type it into your browser, Patreon.com/slash/youpartyartist, and you will be able to press on the join and select the tier that you would like to to have. Hey Daisy Flowers. Well, we could paint another backlit uh, painting. I, I'm thinking that this is going to start, um, this is going to take me down a path of more bright, uh, bright lit paintings. Now that I can layer uh, very thick paint onto thick paint with um, with the fast drying alkids. It's really just unlocked a new a new thing really. And someone mentioned about all the paints here. Um, so check this out. Uh, what you can do, if you're running out of paint, you can stab right into it. And you can kind of like peel off the dry portion. And then you have more usable paint. Uh, yep, that is something you can do with oil paints. So I didn't even have to add extra paint. It was it already kind of sealed itself there. Hey Brad is fruit. I came uh let's see, I came to the last stream. The progress you've done is great and the painting is gorgeous. Oh thank you. Blue Dragon, you probably will you make paintings with palette knife technique. Some painters mix uh, brush with knife. Actually, this was done with palette knife. Um, the background. I don't know about palette knife to the to the skin tones, but certainly palette knife can be done for the background and for textures. If you mean for the skin tones, yeah, I can experiment with it, but for the most part. Um, it will give the painting like a certain look that I don't know if will go well with my uh, the, with my paintings, but we can look into it. Hey, SKTR, uh, is that a medium that you're using on the bottom right of your palette? Um, thank you for the great tutorials. Uh, thank you for tuning in. SKTR, this is my medium. This is Venetian medium made by Rublev.
So also, um, so Helen, since you will be the, so you are now the owner of this painting, so I will be sending you pictures of this painting, um, so an, an official picture of this painting I will be sending to your email. I believe I can also send it through Etsy. So a few more little soft transitions along the side of the eyes. And we should almost be able to sign it. So I put in a thick layer of paint, of course with medium, and then I used a uh, scrubby brush to soften that edge there, just so that edge doesn't draw too much attention to itself. Hey Zozart, oh thank you. So again, I'm adding the paint, a little bit thick, yet still with the medium. Scrubby scrub brush. Again, a scrubby scrub brush is just a paint brush that has expired. So the bristles are just way too used up. So it's then something that I use for uh, scrubbing the paint around. Oh, thanks, Riley. Thanks, Ingrid. So adding a little bit of paint and then using the scrubby scrub brush to get that very soft and translucent edge that we want. You know, I think one of my favorite moments in the painting is probably here. I don't know why, but like the way this drags towards the eyes, it just it adds to the composition as a whole, I feel. Hey Riley, I have no clue. I don't even know what that is. Uh, thanks again, Zozart. Okay, all right, so I think we are almost there. Lips need a highlight. I need to step back, double check. Again, last time I I pretty much painted all of this to completion. Um, I like the look that this has. And yeah, the background definitely helped out a lot. Hey Helen, um, well I'm so excited to own this amazing painting. The colors are gorgeous, you are so talented. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you so much, Helen, and again, thank you so much for purchasing this painting. As you were seeing, we're just putting in the final touches. So I think what I'm going to do is put in a little more of a highlight on the lip. I'll sign it, and then um, I'll wait for any adjustments that you would like me to make on this painting, Helen. But we've pretty much taken the painting to the level that I wanted it to go. Final highlights now. Hey Riley, oh thank you. Define Arts shows the back lit on the hair really nicely. Thank you. Yeah, I mean this is one of those those moments in the painting where you know when I started today I I knew that all I had to do was add more depth to the darks as we did there and then a few more elements of the hair but as you're seeing all we did really was refine what we had and of course the painting has been purchased so I'm going to take the link off so I'm going to unpin it um, since the painting has now been sold so this painting has been sold it is uh, no longer available it will be going to its forever home very soon as you're seeing in the photograph or the listing the background being the way it is I think adds a lot to the painting so I knew then all I had to do was go in and push the subtlety see the subtlety that you're seeing in here hey Riley yep this is the stream is going to end soon and um, and this really is because I in the first sitting of this painting so last Monday when we started this painting, I started it a la prima, so I was able to move much faster than normal. Hey Monica. It's it's ending, it hasn't ended yet. Not yet, I still gotta sign it, ask any questions, and see if there's anything I need to adjust on the painting. But yeah, that just goes to show when you're um, when you start with the Alla Prima, yes, it is harder to draw, but it does, and as a whole, add more, uh, I guess, uh, more more speed to the development of the painting. Those art uh, fan of your drawings from Kuwait. Uh, keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now it's time to sign. And um, so yeah, as I mentioned before, starting with the Alla Prima approach accelerated uh, the painting, but also allowed us to layer all of those colors much more vividly than uh, had we not. Hey Monica, I'm glad that you like this one. Alright, let's add a signature. Uh, so I'm gonna sign with the a uh, little bit of a let's say a alizarin and ultramarine blue. I think I need a little more alizarin. Hey Mervot, I love the way you change the dead colors to live colors. Look to the reference photo and your lovely, wonderful, awesome colors and you will understand. I learned a lot from your Yupari. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your comment, Mervot. Hey Harja, um, that's a good question. Hmm. I was about to sign it over here. 
I think that this might be the best place to sign it. If I sign it here, the signature is going to pop too much and it's going to take from the composition. So I'm thinking I'm going to sign it right over here. Um, very similar to how the, uh, the, the Van Dyke painting was signed. Hey Kathy, how did you arrive at your signature? Good question. Uh, Marshall, do you sign in the same spot on each painting? Good question. I usually don't. Uh, yeah, lower right definitely. Um, and Helen, if you're okay with me signing over here, right in this section. Hey Helen, yep, all right, we'll sign bottom right. So Kathy, how did you arrive at your signature? Um, I've had the same signature since the beginning. Um, it, I want to say 2009 I was signing with my full name, but around 2010 is when I started signing um, with just my last name and the dash that I use. And this painting will also come with a certificate of authenticity with a matching signature. And of course, since the painting is dry over here, um, I will be able to, if, if, if we don't like the way the signature looks, I'm always able to adjust it. Now what I want is to get a really fine, um, let's see, a, a really fine line. So I'm gonna switch now to this brush, see if I can get a fine line, I think I can. So it's all in the, the ratio of paint to medium, if you can get a really fine line. Also depends on what brush you have. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna opt out for um, maybe this one. Okay, yeah, I think this one will work. Okay, let's write this down. I think right here. And I want to make sure there's enough paint for the signature. I'm actually going to have to add some raw umber just because it's too... Hey Helen. Yeah, I'm glad I'm signing in the right spot. <laughs> Okay, now what's left is the year this painting was created, and we've just about to have a completed painting. Okay. It is about level, so the painting has been signed. So Helen, uh, if you see anything here that you would like me to adjust, please let me know. So um, everyone else, I'm going to now be cleaning up the brushes. So I didn't use that many brushes, so let's see how many do I have. Not that many brushes, so I'll be cleaning off my brushes. I'll be waiting to see if the new owner of this painting uh, has any uh, suggestions or something I would like to change on the painting. So as I clean off the brushes, again, please feel free to ask me any questions that you have in mind. Consider this our dedicated questions and answers uh, time. And of course, Helen, you will also receive, since you have purchased during a live stream, you will also receive a, a bonus painting signed painting by me on a sheet of canvas in the box.
Hey Julie, uh, you probably this painting is one of my favorites you've done so far. I love how you've made these colors pop. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, thanks, Monique. So just cleaning the old brushes. Also, um, as a little bit of a uh, as a, a little bit of a teaser into Monday's announcements, we're also going to have stickers available. So anyone that was interested in stickers, I will make that announcement on Monday's stream. But those of us that are here currently, you have the the uh, the first official me mentioning that there will be stickers to listen to. So yeah, there will be stickers available on Monday. So anyone interested in stickers, definitely check out um, Monday's video. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Yep, everyone say congratulations to Helen, the new owner of this painting. I'm just waiting on Helen. So Helen, if there's anything on this painting that you would like me to adjust, please let me know. You can see all of the corners here have been covered. So if there's anything you'd like me to adjust, Helen, please let me know. Yep, yep, Julie, we have some merchandise coming. In particular, stickers. Of course, I'm going to clean off the palette. So again, if anyone has any questions, anyone that's here watching live, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Anything that's uh, art related that we can talk about. Hey Bert, 2008 before 69, the next painting. I don't know. I gotta figure that one out. Can you do, so Julie, can you do lessons with other mediums if you don't have oil paints? Um, I can do acrylic, but I don't know if I'll be able to get the same type of results just because of my, uh, lack of knowledge of acrylics. That being said, I do have a video uh, featuring acrylics. Um, other materials I could do involve pastel, but mainly I do oil painting. But I can keep that in mind. Hey Steven, yeah, the glasses definitely wouldn't, I don't think would have worked. 
Hey Helen, alrighty. I'm glad that you enjoyed the painting as it is. I, I personally didn't feel like it needed much. Um, after uh, looking at this painting for a while, uh, I, I really didn't think it needed that much. So uh, again, thank you so much, Helen, for purchasing this painting. So everyone that has been watching the development of this painting, you have seen the painting when it was just a blank canvas from our first brush strokes, the middle stages, the war in the comments that we had. All of that experience has been captured here just for you. And again, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Again, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Helen. Again, everyone, this is me signing out. Of course, I may hang out for a minute or two, uh, just until all of the comments arrive uh, that someone may be typing right now. Again, I wish you the absolute very best in all of your artwork. Don't forget to check out the uh, Zoom one-on-one -on -one sessions that I have available, Zoom one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions that I have available, and as well as the group uh, Zoom tutoring sessions. And I also mentioned that we're going to be having stickers available very soon, so that's also going to be something very exciting. Hey Julie, I mean, can students use a different medium if they don't have oils? Oh yeah, definitely. We have students that use gouache, students that use watercolor, students that use acrylic. Um, I think we have a, uh, a pastelist with us, I, I believe. We have uh, students that do um, paintings on um, three-dimensional surfaces, like uh, sculptures. Hey Isaac, best colors to start portrait paintings? Honestly, I would suggest this palette here. Uh, it's a very affordable one. Um, of course, these are fast dryers. I have them linked in the description box of this video. But I, I really, I highly suggest these. So this is me signing out. I think um, a minute has passed, so I think that's pretty much all of the uh, comments that everyone was typing as I was saying um, as I was saying goodnight. So that being said, take care, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Again, we will be back around the same time, uh, very likely 5:30. I've been usually doing five, but 5:30. Um, Monday night, 5.30, for the start of another painting. I wish you all the very best in all of your artwork. And we still have one more question here, no problem. Uh, Matt K, what's up? Uh, what colors did you use to get those bright yellows? This is titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, deep, fast drying edition um, from uh, Winsor Newton. So that is the cadmium yellow deep Hugh Griffin Alkit and um, Titanium White um, Griffin Alkit with a little bit of the Windsor Red to get these colors. Alright, well, again thank you again so much Helen. Alright, thanks everyone. Again I wish you the absolute very best in our, all of your artwork and I'll see you again on the next one.